Won't you come with me? I'll take you to a place you've never been and talk about the days we fell in love. Feeling guilty for never sharing. I always had a fascination with roller coasters uh, growing up, and I, I found them amazing. Like as you can hear in the background, the screams. Uh, and it takes me back to going to Alton Towers when I was a young boy and I saw my first ever big ride and I thought, I think I want to do that. And since then, I've been obsessed with roller coasters. There's a lot of people that feel stuck in their life uh, and I was one of those people. Um, I was teaching mathematics and it seemed to be an excellent job. I loved the people I worked with, I loved the kids uh, I was teaching but there was just something that was missing for me. There was this piece that was missing and it, it became bigger and bigger over time, uh, which was filled with stress and even sickness. Uh, and it was genuine illness because of so much stress, because there was an element of me not wanting to be there anymore. A slight part of me felt trapped because I'd studied mathematics and computer science, but I'd chosen a path to be a teacher. And even looking at my family, my sister was a teacher, so I kind of followed suit, kind of followed in her path. And everyone was proud of me and, and so on. And I felt there was almost a pressure there that I kind of took on. And it can be hard when you're in a job and you're the maybe the main earner for the family, and you know that you just can't walk out and leave and go, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to become a guitarist. I'm just going to go do that. It doesn't quite work like that. And I know there's something in the mind telling you, whoa, you have responsibility. And that was my special thought, that word, responsibility. It's a really interesting thing where it almost traps you. Responsibility can be taken in so many levels and my mind had just adapted it into you cannot do anything else with your life. You have to keep going because next year you will earn more money. And I thought, I, I can't live my life doing this anymore. I ripped a muscle in my shoulder and it was in such severe pain that I had to go to the hospital. So I was off work for one month taking a lot of painkillers and I was signed up for this operation and then I was taken along with my wife to uh, attend a meditation course uh, over the weekend and by the end of the weekend I had no pain. It's, I think when I say it I almost don't believe it myself but it, it happened. So whether or not that was my mind letting go of something and my body, we all know that they are connected. Who knows, but I was better and I was feeling free. And I thought, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something now. I need to change my life. And I had this epiphany of what I wanna do in my life and it was become a roller coaster designer. So at that point, I decided I'm going to start contacting companies and see what I can do, and met one in particular where I had a connection. And it went from possibly working with them over the summer to having a one-month contract to having a three-month contract to at the end of the conversation, they were offering me possibly a year contract, but I had to go through some interviews and speak to the right people. So magic can happen, but I would say that the biggest message there is follow your heart because there was times where I hit some hurdles that I thought, oh, I can't do this. For example, the CV writing is it's very tough, trying to boast about yourself and make yourself seem really good. But you have the support there from friends and family, and you have to support yourself. I moved out to the Netherlands from, from the UK, and we started our life out here, myself and my wife. After four weeks, they said they wanted to keep me on permanently. So it was, it was pretty amazing. So, yeah, you just got to follow your heart. Alexander Freund, and I'm a musician. Artists, especially artists on stage, are 
exposed to a lot of stress, a lot of thinking and a lot of challenges, right? I mean, physical challenges and a lot of mental challenges. And uh, I remember very well during more than 25 years of, of me playing the trumpet, being a trumpet player, there was always this struggle of trying to be somebody, somebody that my head expected me to be. It took me until I was 37 to find out that actually this expectation is just fake, it's just fictitious and has nothing to do with who I am or who I'm supposed to be. Once I was asking my teacher, why does he play trumpet in a smaller orchestra comparing to the level that he has? And he said like, yeah, well, I, I, I played in big orchestras, but I remember if there was a big symphony in the evening at eight, the symphony started at 10 in the morning in my head. Meditation, for me, made things just so much less dramatic. When you have to do something, you can do it only now. Or you, you plan it to do it tomorrow and then you do it tomorrow, but you don't think about it between now and tomorrow. And this is the same with music, because uh, when you're on stage and you play a note, you play it in the moment you play it. You don't play it 10 minutes before. So this is the best baker in town, by far. The best part is we just shoot away. <laughs> this is the earliest I've ever been here. Hi, Ian. When you get used to live present without all this talk about what you're gonna do in five minutes, 10 days or whatever, things just become efficient and things start to flow. It might lead you to do something which you hadn't planned at all. When the audience goes into a concert, in my opinion, there are two possibilities. It touches them or it doesn't. <laughs> There's not much between, you know? And uh, if it touches them, it has nothing to do with the technical capability of the musician. It has nothing to do with how fast the scale was. The audience will never appreciate that more than a concert which comes just from the moment. The similarities between Cuba and East Germany are very familiar to me because I grew up in East Germany. I was very lucky last year to, to be uh, the first time in, in, in Cuba. I was blown away because if money hasn't much value, because you actually can't buy anything for it, uh, people somehow do have to focus on something else, which today is the biggest focus in society. What can I buy? How big is the car or the house? You know? So, And if you can't do that because it just doesn't exist, uh, inner human relationships are much more important, which I would say was very much the case, and which in Cuba is very much the case still. People wanted just to be in peace, not thinking about why don't I have, why am I not allowed, why shouldn't I, why can't I, but just being able to be grateful for what is in life. And that's something we all can learn from a lot. Mi nombre es Camila Guerra Denia y me dedico a bailar, doy clases por la mañana, por las tardes, hago mi ballet, todas las partes de la especialidad, doy francés, doy música, preparación física, eh, todo lo que hacemos, todo lo que hace una bailarina y después cuando voy para la casa tengo que hacer mis tareas y practicar, porque si no practico no puedo llegar a hacer nada. Bueno, de bailar me gusta todo, absolutamente todo. No hay nada que me guste más que bailar. Eh, eh, es que como expreso, expreso mis sentimientos, expreso todo lo que siento, expreso lo que tengo en el corazón, que es bailar. Expreso lo que me, lo que me da la fuerza de seguir cada día más. Me da fuerza para seguir porque es lo que quiero. Es mi sueño, ser una gran bailarina.
Bueno, yo desde, desde que adquirí esta mágica técnica, las palabras mágicas, me he sentido mucho mejor. Veo como eva voy evolucionando en todo lo que me propongo. Si me siento mal, me siento extraña o no me siento parte de un grupo, la digo, cierro mis ojos, la digo, me relajo y todo fluye, ya todo va bien, me siento más tranquila, más relajada, si me dan deseos de llorar, la hago, y no que se me quite el deseo de llorar, lloro porque se no se quiten los deseos, pero que me siento más aliviada, más tranquila, más relajada. Bueno, mi familia, desde que yo he experimentado estas técnicas, estas palabras mágicas, ellas, mi mamá, como sobre todo mi mamá, se siente muy, muy contenta de ver cómo he evolucionado más de lo que ella esperaba, de que como me voy esforzando cada día más, ella se embulló y el 29, el 30 y el 31 va a ser las técnicas también. Ella va a ir a, para, ver si, para ver todo lo que he experimentado, lo, todo, para saber todo lo que he experimentado yo y todo lo que a mí me ha mejorado. Ella está muy contenta y para saber si a ella también le puede mejorar y fluirle bien. No, los niños hacen cualquier cosa, los adultos se preocupan todo por todo. Hay incluso niños que dicen que por qué se preocupan tanto. Es porque ellos tienen experiencia y quieren que a uno no le pase lo que le pasó por ellos. Tratan de cuidar mucho a los hijos, a los niños, para que no sufran lo que ellos sufrieron alguna vez. Y los cuidan mucho, pero los niños hacen cualquier cosa. Los niños hacen lo que quieren, brincan, saltan, que los adultos siempre están muy, muy preocupados. No, no hagas esto porque te puedes caer. No hagas esto no, porque te puedes caer. No hagas esto porque te puede pasar algo, te puedes dañar alguna pierna. Imagínense lo que somos bailarinas, pero hacemos lo que queremos. Ay, excepto cuando nos regañan, ya nos ponemos así, no hacemos más nada. Sí, a Camila fundamentalmente yo le vi mucho cambio en, lo, en su relación con la danza. Ella tenía como una idea de que tenía que bailar para, para que los padres, la, complacer a los padres o complacer a los maestros. Y después la se enseña y le pude observar que ella está disfrutando de la danza, que ella baila para ser feliz. My name's Connor, I'm from Scarborough, I'm 20 years old. And I'm Jay, I'm from Scarborough as well, and I'm 23 now, so getting on a little bit. <laughs> Ruthless compassion lies in the shadows. We met probably four or five years ago. Um, we were kind of gigging quite a lot. Uh, we met for a coffee one day, and I'd been ascending quite a while. Uh, before that, and so I mentioned it to Jay. We watched The Secret by Rhonda Byrne, and on there was a big teaching about the law of attraction and positive thinking. Yeah, positive thinking and things like that. So we both made a dream board. I made mine in about three minutes. I was like, yeah, this, this looks good, and, and this looks good. <laughs> and then I went around the next day to Connor's, and he had this grand. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. It was all cut out and, and collaged. So and I decided to like. Get, get big pieces of A1 paper and like get other pictures and cut them out and stick them on and then cut round it all. And so I ended up with like this huge dream board full of things. Huge. <laughs> and Jay's was like just a piece of A4 paper with a few pictures <laughs> on it. Jay asked me if you could just have one thing on this dream board, what would it be? And so I pointed to the bright path and he was like, well, what's that? And so I kind of explained to him about Ascension and... No, no, no. He said, it's a six-month course where I sit and close my eyes. <laughs> so I'm now thinking, right. So you would pick going to Spain for six months to close your eyes over playing Wembley, playing Madison Square, um, New York apartment. Platinum the, album. Platinum album, yeah, all these massive things. And then he tried to explain it to me for about <laughs> five days. And he was like, I do not get this whatsoever. And and he, he kept saying, so you'd really choose that over a platinum album? And I was like, well, yeah. And, and I was kind of trying to get across to him that with the silence and the presence, none of the other stuff really matters. Nice scenery. Yeah, it's nice scenery, yeah. yeah. Um, um, that, that was the point for me when I, I knew I was missing something. <laughs> So I started hounding Connor every single day to teach me this 
Meditation technique. No, I'm not teaching. Wait until you do your course. <laughs> that you finally got to learn. I did. His dad sat down and did a bit of an introductory talk with me and said, what's your highest desire? And I said, success. And he said, why? What will it bring you? And no matter what we started with, whether it was money or family or relationships or careers, a car, a car anything, <laughs> it all ended up with peace and happiness. You know, they bring you these things. It's not the actual material object or the thing that brings you. Or even the people. No, it's not that that, that you really want. It's what it brings you, which is contentment, happiness, peace. So he then said that this is possible with no outside influence, which to me was, even without, without the objects or the people, you're immediately putting your happiness somewhere else. Yeah. I'll be happy when. I'll be happy when. I get a better You can job. never be happy now if you can only be happy when. Yeah. You know, you're just immediately taking your own happiness from yourself. Like, I've got my happiness here, and I'm going to put it right over there and chase it forever. <laughs> or you could just invite it back. Yeah. And I know you there. Even with uprising emotions, instead of seeing emotions as a bad thing, you know, pushing sadness away, pushing anger away, just, they just want to be held, you know, like children coming home. So they just, you can feel sad or angry and peaceful at the same time underneath. And that was a, that was a big one for me when I realised that. Don't be fooled. So rest into this moment. Don't be running. Cause you're running from away. Knows you're true. To think this moment's never, never missing anything. I think a lot of people our age group immediately take this notion of meditation and think they're going to be locked in a cave for ten months. Yeah. Definitely. You know, rather than saying, "Well, I sit down for twenty minutes in the morning and then I have way more fun all day," because life's just brilliant. <laughs>